Greetings, humans. How are we all doing? It is Sunday. Who is ready uh, to meet their end in probably a most horrific fashion? I couldn't say for certain, but there's a pretty good chance, you know. How is everybody? It is Sunday. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Uh, who's ready for some chaos? I'm ready for some chaos. I live for the chaos. Who else lives for the chaos? Uh, hello, Ruth. You are first yet again. Well done. Uh, greetings, Paula. Slay. Slay the day away. Uh, slay all day. I, I, we looked up what that was in Latin today, the human and I. Don't worry about why, but we did. Now I can't bloody remember it. That's really irritating, isn't it? I thought I was going to have something really clever to tell you. Uh, and the brain has let me down. Once again, I blame the human. Hello, Zara. Uh, and greetings, Laura, as well. Whoa. Oh, human, you hit something. Dear, oh, dear. Uh, and good afternoon, too, Chloe. Uh, <laughs> yes, the, the human tried to scroll, and then I thought you were all going to vanish. Um... You want a happy birthday from me as well, Ruth? Oh my goodness, Ruth, you're milking it, right? Slay in Latin is that. Thank you, Zara. Uh, and there, it was slay all day. So it was that uh, in DM or something. Uh, hello, Skip. Whoa. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ruth. Uh, hello, Rich. Right, well, everyone joins. Apparently, I have to sing happy birthday to Ruth as well because she's fucking milking this. Uh, but then it is a big one, isn't it? Yes. Uh, Chloe, I was going to comment on you calling me Rasputin, but I, I couldn't think of what Chloe was, uh, like, short for. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't turn it into some sort of new name. So, yeah. Uh, Chloe, the, the human has scheduled, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, if you're a patron, if you're on Patreon, there's been a murder mystery this week. Uh, and the the killer, well, an arrest was made, uh, but the killer has not yet been revealed, shall we say. Um, so another arrest will be made later this afternoon, Chloe, don't you worry. Um, in, Interficite totem DM. Yeah, slay all day, bitches. Thank you, Zara. Uh, right. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Yvonne. <laughs> Ruffle my fluff indeed. Now, 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 now. Uh, so basically, yes, if you want to, to catch up on the murder mystery uh, challenge, as it were, you have to go to Patreon. Yeah. Uh, and even if you don't want to, you should still go to Patreon. There's so much stuff there. So much stuff. Uh, and you don't even have to pay for most of it. There's loads of stuff there. And if you do, you can do a seven-day free trial. Anyway, anyway... Murder mystery is the only true crime you enjoy. <laughs> uh, Yvonne, are we doing everyone what every week? What happens, Yvonne, on Patreon is if you do go to Patreon and you do decide to pay, what happens is you get a couple of posts uh, a week, just some outtakes, maybe some funny quotes, some little videos, uh, and then for one week of a month, uh, we have a, like a themed week. So... This month was a murder mystery, uh, and before that we've had, what have we had? We've had, um, uh, like, personality tests, uh, and we had a quiz, uh, and I can't remember what the fuck else we've done. <laughs> but there's usually a themed week, so once a month you get a whole week that's themed, uh, and it was murder mystery this week. Does any of that make sense? Does it? Good. Right, hello, Josh. Whoa, human. You scrolled too much. Uh, hello, Denise, as well. Um, uh, Chloe, how do we have the human? Uh, uh, Chloe, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Chloe, I, I, I don't know. We'll have to see what else we can peer pressure the human into today. Uh, greetings, Anachronist. Uh, uh, right, I'm going to sing. Uh, Laura, you need a disclaimer up front. Will the human be singing? I, I couldn't possibly say, Laura. I couldn't possibly say. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> it's too frightening to think about. It's too frightening. Uh, oh, Chloe, you've just gone auto auto renewal. 
uh, which unfortunately doesn't count. Shame. Um, reminder for subs, next week we have a sub only. Yes, uh, so not tomorrow, but the following Monday will be our sub only stream uh, on, on the Monday afternoon. Um, Yvonne, you think the goal was getting the human to do whatever we want? Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, you're going to bully the human into whatever the next goal is. Um, now, an important thing next weekend as well. Listen up, people. Listen up very closely. Don't cross the streams. <laughs> listen up closely, everybody. Don't distract me. Uh, next weekend is free UK postage on the T-shirts. And I will tell you why this is important. This is important because all of my lovely current T-shirts, I say my, Zulu would be upset at that, all of our current range of T-shirts will be discontinued at the end of September. Yeah, we're going to have some new shit. Spooky month is coming. We're going to have some new shit for spooky month. So that is why, uh, yeah, September is your last chance to get our current range of T-shirts. What? I know, Paula. What indeed? <laughs> <laughs> Paula, you can probably guess there's a <laughs> the, the the human will fill you in later. So, uh Muto, I know. Welcome all those poor doms, right? <laughs> I'm only interested in the subs. Uh hello Emily, hello Sock Monkey. Um so yes, that's a little bombshell, wasn't it? So if you want any of her current range of t-shirts, you gotta move, 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 move. Um so yes, next weekend you'll have Free postage, free UK postage on the T-shirts. Uh, and then after that, it will be our sub-only post. It was, th was that a vote on, on? I don't know why I'm looking at the screen like that, um, on who, want to, who we want to be our host next next time? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> Paula, 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 revenge is a strong word. Reve revenge is beneath me. Yeah. Um, will there be a giveaway, perhaps? Uh, sadly, a necklace. The short answer is no. <laughs> um, what it is, is it's one of those print-on-demand companies, so it's not as if the human has stock that she's getting rid of. It's just that we need to do a little bit of housekeeping. Yes, and we've had the same beautiful designs for a while now. So we're shaking things up. Yes, like this. Like that, shaking. See what I did there? See what I did? Uh, Persephone will not be hosting Laura, please. Uh, oh, an acronister is always worth a punt. Paula, we can give you away. And any, any takers? Tumbleweed. <laughs> was that mean? That was mean. Um, so, I'm glad you liked my shake. So, anyway, I... <laughs> It's go <laughs> but Paula, it's going to be really great to see what's coming to the store. <laughs> the human thinks so also. <laughs> uh, sadly, it's, it's one of the humans. <laughs> it's one of the humans' bright ideas, and she's thinking now that she hasn't really thought it fucking through. So it's it's going to be a surprise to all of us come October, exactly what we have got in our t-shirt shop. Anyway, <laughs> Prevenge, oh, Mutu, if we could get Prevenge on Paula, we'd have to be fucking psychic, wouldn't we? Um, the human won't be happy looking at the poll. Oh, fuck, what have you done? Is, <laughs> is, who, who was it? Is it Chloe type won't be happy, or is it Zara type human won't be happy? Um... <laughs> We'll, we'll see. We'll see when the poll is over. Now, I'm going to sing happy birthday to Ruth before I forget. <coughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ruth. Happy birthday to you. There we go. A little bit of flair. Curry isn't the only one who has flair, you know. Uh... Zara, you're not to blame. Okay. Human is in the lead, right? <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that pans out. So, um, 
You do sensible pose. Really, Chloe? Really? Uh, it was giving Marilyn Monroe. I thought Corey did a better job of that yesterday, frankly. But anyway, I think we've done phlegm. <laughs> phlegm instead of flair. Uh, well, I mean both, right? <laughs> uh, and on that note, the human's going to take a sip. Oh, human, you have to stretch, don't you? All the way over there. Oh, oh dear, Rich. It's okay, it's okay. You're, you're getting old. You don't need your hearing much anyway now. Uh, I'm going to let the human sip. <laughs> oh, human, yes, that's too far away, isn't it? That's quite a stretch. There we go. Right, so, um, oh yeah, we're going to do an escape room or something, I suppose, aren't we? Yeah, um, it's, it's a bit early, we've got a good 20 minutes to kill before we need to worry about that. So, uh, I'll ask now, stickers for next week, subs, what, uh, what stickers would you like for next week? I think we've got we've got easily uh, two gaps that could be filled. Um, and actually, Mister, you need to wake up. Wake up! Uh, right. What stickers do you want, people? Mind the gap. Really, Paula? <laughs> okay. Right. The sub only host. Is going to be the human. Well done, Chloe. I was just wondering, Jesus Christ, how do we have that many options? Do you know what? Zula, so there isn't much Zulering going on, is there? On account, you know, that's their name up there. Not a lot of Zulering going on, honestly. Uh, oh, Paula, because I said we had two gaps to fill. Fucking hell. Anyway, um, <laughs> anachronist, do you want the human to sing? We will see. We will see. We will see. But anyway, that's not uh, that's not for tomorrow. That's for next Monday. Um, so we've got plenty of time to scare the shit out of the human about what's coming, haven't we? Um, <sighs> anachronist, I, I admire your... I admire your uh, enthusiasm for dead Carl Kure and Raz playing ping pong with his eye. Um, but I, I don't think we have very much space in a sticker for that. Uh, but we'll do a Human Sings sticker, OK. You think Zula is the straight man? Oh, Zula, <laughs> Zula will be so disappointed, Yvonne. <laughs> Um, you did even include the chicken, Chloe. Yes, well done. Uh, you need a Gordon Ramsay sticker to use. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, we'll see what we can do. Um. No, 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 Ravon, I knew, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Uh, but Zula, Zula thinks they're the, the, Zula thinks they're the funny one. They're the talented one. Yeah. Um, and, oh, hello, Glam Rock Bonnie. Welcome. Um, seaside Squad. I mean, that's interesting information, but I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Congratulations. I. I don't know. I feel like you've lost your way and you've ended up on the wrong live. Do you know what I? What we have seen a live for? Has anyone else seen the hamsters? The I think they're called Hamster God or something. And it's literally just four, like, spinning hamster wheels. And the hamsters just go fucking nuts. They, they go on and they spin and they spin and they run and then they're flung off over in the corner and then they get up and they get back on again. It's, Laura, I knew you would. <laughs> it's quite mesmerising, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it? It keeps cropping up. <laughs> On our FYP, and and it's one of those things you—it's hypnotic. You can't look away. 
Uh, Paul, you ate cheese on toast. Well, that is quite interesting, isn't it? Uh, Zulu is as straight as a roundabout. Um, yes. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Sure. Shall we move on from the from the hamster rave, the minifigures, and the the cheese eating? Um, what was it we were going to do? Day. Oh yes, we were going to do an escape room. So for those of you who've never joined us before, it's kind of like an interactive story, but there's a little bit of puzzle and a little bit of interactivity. So yes, um, there were bats, but real bats. Yeah, okay. Bats are quite sweet though. I wouldn't want to get one stuck in my fur, but you know. Uh, Laura Piggy likes it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a few carrots short of a bunch. Uh, oh, Denise, you're on the salads. My condolences. Um, I mean, beetroot's nice, though, but don't have too much of it, you know, for obvious reasons. Well, maybe it's not obvious, but the following day you will think you're dying. Um, <laughs> no, Paula, don't go, don't, don't, don't go and get more tea, Paula. We're going to start. Um, uh, cheese eating hamster roundabouts. Hello, Froggis. Yes, all of that. It makes absolutely perfect sense. Uh, yesterday you had <laughs> gardening with Kure. Today you have, uh, the hottest news on TikTok. Yeah. So, yes very much double the fun with beetroot um <laughs> especially if you you sort of don't remember it the following day um <laughs> clamrock bun uh, uh bonnie you're very excited about toe beans and i'm very happy for you um okay okay so i'm going to start the escape room i think oh hello nikki uh i look different have you got your eyes open? Are you wearing glasses? Have you... You're not holding any sweet wrappers in front of your eyes. You know, like back in the day. Uh, <laughs> when television was boring and the most exciting thing at Christmas was having a tin of roses or Quality Street and you took out the coloured uh, cellophane and held them in front of your eyes so that the whole world looked different. Are you doing that, Nikki? Are you? Are you? I bet you are. Um... Bedtime stories for adults. And I can say, oh, are they scary or are they genuinely soothing? Because, like, I, I mean, just genuinely soothing, you're missing a trick. I don't think I'd be able to resist getting everyone quiet and calm. M mind your ears, Rich. Getting everyone quiet and calm and then just going, rah, like that. I mean, why, why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Uh, yes, folks, we're going to try. We're going to try and get around to it. I mean, I was going to start it just now. And now we've got like seven other messages that I haven't have to catch up on. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, Anacris, that was obscure. That wasn't obscure. You haven't lived if you haven't done that. I mean, that was back in the day before the human was old enough to drink. Uh, and she started drinking at about five. <laughs> Uh, hello, MHB. You think uh, extra conditioner? Maybe. Yes. Um, right. Uh, Laura, is that a prediction of how we're going to start? Or is that just you every morning? Yeah. Oh, I know, Nikki. They don't exist anymore. It's awful, isn't it? Yeah. But I say awful. But you know what there's not enough of? There's never enough green triangles, is there? No. More green fucking triangles. Right. Chloe, you have spicy bedtime stories. Well, that's why it's bedtime. So. <laughs> oh, hello, Splat. Welcome. Who's Roger? Who, who, who's, who, who's mentioned Roger and Tigger? What have I done? <laughs> um... Baby shame, Nikki. I'm I'm terrified. Uh, Anachronista was very nineties. Oh, well, well, I'm fucking old, Anachronista. I'm old. 
uh, skip drinking five. Well, not regularly. I mean, it's like the law. Okay, in the UK, right? Back, back me up as well here, because uh, yeah, I'm looking at you, Paula. We know what Canada's like now, right? You're you're little. It's Christmas. Your grandfather has a little drink, and they go, "Oh, have have a little sip of that. Why don't you try a drop?" Uh, thank you for my penguin, Ruth. Um, and then before you know it, it's a very slippery slope. Right? That's how we that's how we roll over here. Uh, so, <laughs> well, Mutu, <laughs> you you say that, but you know you know when babies are teething. <laughs> No, rub a rub a little bit on the gums. Rub a little bit on the gums. <laughs> oh, baby sham. Oh, and uh... <laughs> oh, anachronist. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for translating <laughs> what Nikki is talking about. Baby sham. <laughs> I thought you were implying that Santa sort of interfered with you. <laughs> he brought you baby shame. <laughs> <laughs> baby sham. Yes, I do remember baby sham. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> baby sham. Baby sham. <laughs> uh... Hello, Emma, Bristol Cream, Sherry, and, and Baileys. <laughs> I'm sorry, we've lost the human. <laughs> She's trying to stop now and it's making it worse. <laughs> Okay, okay, we're going to be fine. <laughs> we're all going to be fine. We're, we're all going to be okay. It was, it was, it was baby shine. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness, right, okay, so... <laughs> So, <laughs> baby sham, baby sham, <laughs> baby sham, right, <laughs> try and try singing a song now. <laughs> uh, Nikki, is the human dying? It feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my word, right. So what baby sh baby shamavon is like uh it was like a well it is they still make it it's like a perry so like a pear cider um and it would come in tiny little bottles with a cute little deer on it uh and it's <laughs> it's one of those old drinks that was sophisticated for the time you know <laughs> oh <laughs> Oh dear, right. Oh dear, oh my word. Oh goodness. Uh, no, Froggis, no one's ever going to be okay ever again. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Paula, I don't think I can clear it up. I mean, it, it was a simple enough misunderstanding, wasn't it? <laughs> you get... <laughs> You get baby shame at Christmas. I mean, strange things happen, don't they, when you're creeping around in the dark? Oh, so there we go. I, I don't think it was quite champagne, Nikki. <laughs> it felt like champagne. I must be honest, the human, when she was very young, used to sip it and feel so sophisticated. But it is baby sham. There, nobody, nobody has... <laughs> Had any any unwanted pregnancies at Christmas time? <laughs> Nikki meant <laughs> Nikki meant baby sham. <laughs> mm. 
<clears throat> Anachronister, if you hadn't figured it out, the human would have still been absolutely fucking clueless. And Nikki would have still been going, baby shame, baby shame. <laughs> and the human would have been thinking this is like a therapy session. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's 25 past. Oh, I think this is beyond us, Chloe. <laughs> uh, hello, Ace. Uh, you want to get shot of some of your relatives? Well, well, why not? Why not? Um, <laughs> uh, Emma, it implied champagne, yes. Um, but it was definitely, it was alcoholic and, oh, thank you, Denise, swinging heart. Um, it was alcoholic, but it was like a perry, which is like sparkling pear, like a pear cider, like that. Anyway, um, <laughs> you think he deserves a Kure sticker? I, I, I don't know how Kure would feel about it. Um, it's probably too weak for her. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I think we should probably begin the escape room. Uh, I think the human really needs to calm down. Uh, I honestly thought that the, the singing was going to finish her off yesterday, but <laughs> baby shame has almost killed her. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, <laughs> Oh, wouldn't it be great? Oh, we, you can still get baby sham, can't you, human? We need to th think about that for next week, maybe. Uh, Ace, any advice on how to... Oh, Ace, you're having real troubles, aren't you? You're asking for advice on murder. Uh, create a cast iron alibi is the first thing. Um, go somewhere and do something you wouldn't normally do. Uh, make sure you, you mention something to make people look at their watch. So do you know you're there? That's what they always do in Colombo, isn't it? They always roll up and then they casually chat and they go, oh, hey, you got the time when they've got their watch on. Do that. Uh, and then it doesn't matter if people find the body or not, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, I think we might have a baby shame sticker. And Nikki, uh, Nikki, you, you do often uh, bring so much laughter. <laughs> to these but I honestly thought you were going to end the human okay <laughs> there were tears <laughs> so <laughs> oh I like the way everybody else is chipping in with their little murderous advice yeah uh oh well Emery can't have his phone with him because they'll be able to track it or some such don't don't they do that these days so you'll have accidentally left your phone somewhere yes um, <clears throat> people, you need to be more creative. Uh, that's not sus, Emma. Maybe you're just not old enough <laughs> to be forgetful. <laughs> um, oh, no, no, Nikki, please, Nikki, no more. What about this or what about that? Please, Nikki, please, no, 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 Nikki, I don't know. I don't know what apple waters or apple... Oh, you mean... <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway uh, everybody please do give Ace as much advice as possible on how to commit a murder and get away with it I think it's probably about time that we started an escape room let's do something nice and calm <laughs> for just a minute so everyone shall we begin you wake up on a cold, hard and very glossy floor. You quickly get to your feet, expecting to find yourself on a dance floor, wondering to find, wondering if it's a disco or a ballroom. But then you realise you're at a bowling alley. You look up and down the room at the dozen or so empty lanes. There's no one around and it feels eerie. The first thing you notice is that the exit door is firmly shut, locked and chained. A large combination padlock hangs from the door. Unless you find the code, you won't be leaving that way. There's a door marked staff, but it has a card reader next to it. You'll need a key card to unlock it. You look around the rest of the room. There isn't much to see. 
there are a couple of arcade game machines, a door marked toilets, and in the corner of the room, slightly out of place, is a large taxidermy bear. It sets an odd tone for a bowling alley. But just as you're wondering about that, you notice for the first time that something seems to be missing from the room. You notice there isn't a single fire extinguisher in the whole place. There are plenty of spaces where they're supposed to be, but each space is empty. You have a bad feeling about it. Perhaps this place was closed down. You look up and notice a fire sprinkler system on the ceiling. Maybe you won't burn noodles this week after all. With your mind at rest, at least for now, you assess your options. Since the staff door is locked, that only leaves Bear or the Arcade... Arcade... Uh, that. It only leaves Bear or the Arcade Machines to investigate. Oh, or the toilet. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bear, toilet or machines is actually your choice. So... There we go. And apologies if you heard the human's tummy rumbling in the middle of that as well. Uh, so, <laughs> there we are. Um, <laughs> what's the outside door made of, Mutu? Something very strong. Something very strong. Um, but I have a feeling we're going to be uh, going after Bear. Uh no, Skip, this is the UK, so it's a very, very poor selection of arcade games. Don't get excited. Um, I Yeah, I may have fudged that, Chloe. Okay. Um, oh, Ace, you never met a claw machine you couldn't win. Well, those might be some handy skills. Uh, oh, hello, Harry. What did we do? Harry, we've only just started. Um... <laughs> Oh, I felt sure Bear was going to win, but you want to have a look at the arcade machines. Um, I what, Nikki? What? 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 I I don't I don't know, Nikki. No, there's no paper clips. Maybe there won't be any paper clips at all, Harry. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe not. No. No one's. <laughs> oh shit! No one said paper clips. When will I learn? Right. Arcade machines won. Uh, so get ready, Ace. Uh, yes, and yes, Harry, just to bring you up to speed, there was some <laughs> baby shame and booze um, that nearly killed the human, but that's that's a whole other whole other story. You'll have to watch the catch up when the human posts it tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm going to say hello, Bibby. Hello. Um, no, I, we haven't got any hair clips. Get the money. What money? I, I mean, is anybody <laughs> is anybody else playing the same escape room as me? No, no, no. Right, you decide to take a closer look at the arcade games machines. They're pretty ordinary. There's a fruit machine, some game with a laser gun, and a claw machine. You peer inside the claw machine. There are stacks of very cute cream-coloured blue ring octopus plushies. You want one. Especially when you realise they're making a slightly rude gesture with at least six of their tentacles. You rummage in your pockets and pull out a single pound coin. You sigh. It's only enough for two attempts. But you know you're crap at these things. These games are a con! But since there's little else to do, you push the coin in the slot and start moving the claw. Your attempt is pretty good and you grab hold of a octopus, but it drops out the claw almost immediately. Cross that you fell for what was clearly a waste of time, you randomly mash at the buttons for your second turn. You watch as the claw seems to get lost amongst the plushies before rising again. But this time, much to your surprise, a plushie is caught firmly in the claw and is safely delivered to the prize hatch. The plushie, however does not appear to be a octopus. You reach in and pull out your prize. The bright green plushie glares back at you. It looks both murderous and haunted. It's so chilling that you want to cram it back into the claw machine so it can haunt someone else, but at the same time you don't want to let it out of your sight. You're sure that's the moment it's going to kill you. Realising you can't stand there forever, you push the plushie back into the prize hatch. But as you do, you hear fabric rip and watch the stuffing fall to the floor. You suppose the plushie must have got caught and torn 
You frantically try and push the stuffing back into the plushie, hoping the little freak won't hold a grudge when you notice something else amongst the stuffing, a small penknife. You put the penknife in your pocket and the plushie back in the prize hatch. You hope the plushie is now unarmed at the very least. Um, 50... How much? Chloe, how much for a claw? 20 p... Are you kidding me? Come to the fucking south coast. I mean, two goes for a pound is pretty fucking cheap. That's, I mean, seriously, that's wishful thinking. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yes, we found uh, Persephone. Um... What's a baby? No, no, Harry. That it wasn't the humans' baby shame. It, it, it was a a miss, a misspelling, um, and the human, uh, the human, found it amusing. Um, <laughs> uh, well, uh, I never said there were bowling balls, Mutu. I never said the bowling balls. Yeah. Um. So it was Zelo. Yes. Don't eat the knife. Splat, no, don't keep, don't keep the plushie. It's cursed. It's cursed. Oh, hello from Kyoto. Konnichiwa. Um, it is, it is jolly expensive, though, those machines. That's why they're okay. Three for a pound? In, oh, Blackpool says it all, eh? Sorry. <laughs> uh, but there we go. <laughs> It, oh, Splat, I don't think it just needs to eat it, Nikki. Twenty dollars? What, what have you got in those claw machines? Although you, you do get really posh claw machines, don't you? Where, where they have, like, really posh things in them. Yeah. Yes, Mutu, it's been castrated. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> that... <laughs> So, oh, Laura, you're in the wrong Portsmouth. Otherwise, they otherwise those claw machines would be jolly expensive. Uh, Paula, you were not in a claw machine. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Talking nonsense. Um, right. Anyway, <laughs> Apple watches and stuff. Skip. Oh, see now suddenly that's way too posh. Uh, oh, welcome back, Fox family. Are you, are, you, are you implying I'm drunk? Sadly, I'm not yet. Um, 50p for the biggins. I, I, I mean, I know that where we are, it's jolly expensive and very touristy, but my gosh, my gosh, how, how did I suddenly get so polite? And apologies for the humans rumbling, tummy. All of that talk of <laughs> baby shames. <laughs> oh, no, that's not, that's not. Set her off again. Right. You haven't played a claw machine till you've played one in Japan. I'm sure. That's, that's, are they UFO machines there? It's very exciting. Um, you're going to check it out next month, Paula? Uh, Paula, are you just checking out Scottish ones? Oh, you're, you're not doing, you're not doing your UK tour, are you? <clears throat> Uh, I'm just going to let human take a sip. Whoa, human, that's a long way away, that glass. I'm still here. Only going to Scotland, okay. I, I can't comment on the price <laughs> of claw machines in Scotland. <laughs> but I hope they're not as expensive as they are down here, Paula. Uh, anyway, <laughs> ski ball, Yvonne. But what, what is this? Of what you? Oh, okay, Clo Yes, Chloe. It's just bare and toilets now. Yes, just bare and toilets. I'm. I'm sorry. Thank you for all the sip music, sip and stretch music. Yes, right. Bare, bare or toilets. Um. <laughs> uh. And grin. Not bare and toilets. Bare and toilets. And grin for fifty p, Nikki. I. I don't know. I I bear. what? <laughs> Nick, Nikki, Nick, Nikki, Nikki. We've established that the human isn't isn't blessed with brain cells, uh, and <laughs> interpreting <laughs> <laughs> what 
what you might mean has already nearly killed her. And grip for 50p. Grip. <laughs> okay. Gro <laughs> N Nikki, whether it's a grip or a grop, it's, it sounds quite expensive for 50p. I'm just saying. Um... <laughs> No, you can't get a Raz for 50p, Paula. I'm infinitely more expensive. Right, it looks like Bear won. <clears throat> oh, Lego sent you to England for a job. That sounds interesting. Uh, now, it's at this point that I must mention, since we're having a nice chat about claw machines, uh, that we are actually in the middle of an escape room. Uh, and not that anybody seems in, in a particular hurry to escape. <laughs> Uh, but now we have to do the next part of the story, which is to look at the large taxidermy bear <laughs> located in the middle <laughs> of a bowling alley <laughs> that is deserted <laughs> after we've just used a claw machine. <laughs> oh, Chloe, a human for 50p. Uh, I mean, that is way too much, yes. Um, <laughs> I know, Frogis, we're trying, we're trying. Uh, and yes, Chloe is the only one that actually wants to escape. Uh, so anyway, welcome everybody. That is the point at which you've joined. Uh, sanity is not necessary to stay here. Um, in fact, the less of it you have, the longer you will be happy to stick around. So, Bear. You decide to take a closer look at Bear. You stroke Jennifer's fur fondly while also feeling for loose stitching, but you can't find any. You try to manhandle Bear to destruction but they're either stronger than you were expecting or you've grown weaker. Grudgingly, you leave Bear alone. You're going to need a tool to help you. Um, slip and slide, what? Uh, ask you the PhD. It's, it's not so much D&D &D so much as a story. Uh, and we have our own little idi idiosyncrasies. Um... But magic is one of them. Uh, <laughs> Froggish, you don't want to escape. Take a nap on the plushies. Okay, it, it, should we let should we let Froggis do that? Uh, Josh, we don't need to escape. We've got Bear and we've got a toilet. What else do we need? Indeed, indeed. Um, Paula, you choose Laura to be the tool. Uh, we did find a knife, yes. Laura and Chloe, yes, we can use the knife. Uh, oh, God, Nikki needs hot dogs. Well, you've got to have something after all of that baby shame, haven't you? <laughs> so anyway, before the human begins again, uh, let's, um, let's use the knife. You take the pen knife from your pocket and glance over your shoulder, half expecting the cursed plushie to appear and wrestle it from you. But when it doesn't, you calmly slice Bear open instead. Bear's slow deflation is almost more exciting than the claw machine. And you get a prize, too. A lighter. You pick up the lighter and thank Bear as you put it in your pocket for later. Uh, upon you say you thought that was just Zula Green. The, the plushie is. Zelo the cursed plushie is Zula Green. Um, Paula, 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 please don't. What's the lighter, lighter then? <laughs> uh, so anyway, <laughs> uh, just to recap, we now in our possession, we can, if, <laughs> thank you, Laura, Paula, Paula, stop. Oh, I see, Yvonne, right. So, Yvonne, what, what it is, is, uh, yeah, my fur is almost impossible to find a reproduction of. You see, uh, the, it drives the human insane. Yeah. Um, when you light a lighter, it gets light. Oh, Rich, please don't. Please don't. Please. Please. <laughs> uh, Chloe, you want to find noodles? Well, that's very, very mean, isn't it? Uh, anyway, it only leaves the toilet to look in. Yes, Laura, it, let's examine the night soil. Night soil. I am the one and only. 
There's nobody I'd rather be. Uh, and I don't know any other lyrics to that song, so we'll leave it there. Um, wow. <laughs> RC the PhD? You're, I, I think you're looking for a level, detail, a level of detail that you're going to find really quite disappointing as we progress through this. You, <laughs> you wait until we find the corpse. You're... <laughs> You're looking for something far more highbrow than we can deliver, I think. <laughs> so, you decide to take a closer look at the toilets, even though you're almost certain no good will come of it. You push open the door to each stall, expecting to find a corpse looking back at you, and that's the best scenario. But as you push open the final door, you see something on the floor that makes your heart skip a beat. A copy of Luxury Shed Weekly. And not just any old copy... This is the external finish special edition. You flick through the article. It's outrageous. You are partial to a little tongue and groove. But as you turn the magazine for a better look, something falls to the floor. You look down to see a key card. You pick it up and put it in your pocket before finishing reading the rest of the magazine. Then rolling that up and putting that in your pocket as well. You might have another look at those tongue and groove later. In private. Uh, who doesn't love an issue of uh, LSW, right, Emma? <laughs> you love that, Yvonne? <laughs> Nikki, you can get a burger for a pound in Blackpool. Uh, Nikki, as far as I know, none of us are actually in Blackpool. Are we? Um, yes, Froggies, that wasn't exactly... Uh, uh, a spoiler alert that there's going to be a corpse. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, Tongue and Groove belongs in a different magazine. <laughs> uh, right, Chloe, it is indeed staff room time, keeping us on track. We have the key card. We can look in the staff room. Uh, <laughs> okay, Nikki, okay. You swipe the key card in the card reader and the door marked staff clicks unlocked. You push it you oh, you what? You push it open to find yourself in a much smaller room. Please forgive the human's rumbling tummy. You push it open to find yourself in a much smaller room. To call it a staff room is a bit of an overstatement. It's a microwave and a table. As is typical in lots of staff rooms, the odour wafting from the microwave is truly ungodly. But then that might also be coming from the corpse sat at the table. You shake your head. You've had jobs where the boss wouldn't let you have a sick day either. So your choice is corpse or microwave. Um, I, Josh, we really shouldn't have a day trip to Blackpool. <laughs> Uh, is Blackpool like New Jersey of England? Um, uh, I know, no, Blackpool is probably like... Uh, what's what's the place in the US where it thinks it's... Um, Vegas, but it's not. What, what, that place, that's Blackpool. <laughs> um... I don't know. I did. I never said we were in Blackpool, Nikki. <laughs> Nikki, you're confused now. <laughs> uh, yeah, Clo Clo isn't there somewhere in the US where it's like where you go if you can't go to Vegas? Where it's like if you go if if Vegas is too uh, expensive for you. That place is like Blackpool. Some someone help me out. You know what I mean, right? Right. Um, <laughs> oh, it's a tie between microwave and thingy. Uh, Coney Island? Maybe, Emma, is that what I mean? Atlantic City, perhaps? I'm, I'm not sure. I thought I'd know if I heard it. Maybe, maybe Atlantic City. But yeah, it, it, no, not, Niagara Falls. <laughs> Paula. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, Atlantic City is in New Jersey. Oh, well, yes, then, Yvonne. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> 
So, uh, oh, maybe Reno, Froggis. Was I trying to think of, was I trying to think of Reno? I, I, do you know what? I don't know. Uh, oh, Mooty, you want to introduce microwave to corpse, corpse to microwave? Uh, oh, I see, Paula, Niagara Falls is your Vegas. Well, that makes it too posh. We want we want somewhere that aspires to that, but it's just a bit shit. Uh, Ace, you think Reno? Uh, Nikki, where is Re- Nikki? Nikki, 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 my lovely. Don't don't worry, don't worry about where Reno is. It 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 doesn't matter. Um, Coney Island is more seasides and roller coasters. To be fair, that's pretty much any seaside place. Uh, in the UK. Yeah. Reno doesn't have gambling. Uh, I don't know that Bristol is big on gambling, but it's big on being showy and brash and uh, cheap. <laughs> you think Wales. <laughs> Nikki the human doesn't live in Hastings, but all of those seaside places are very similar. You know, you have a pier and a a few amusements and uh, anyway you're big on eating dead carl paula we're big on uh, looking in the microwave apparently microwave one yeah the next big gambling one but not as flashy thank you ace there we go right <laughs> paula you brought cooking sherry oh paula you're you're, you're going up aren't you going up with the culinary uh, ambition cooking sherry Uh, Anyway, microwave. You decide to take a closer look at the microwave and pop open the door to find a large mug inside. You pull out the mug to find it's full of lumpy brownish grey liquid. Under other circumstances, you'd probably find something like this disgusting. But you know hearty, warming human soup when you see it. You take a sip, perfectly seasoned and just the right temperature too. You take a big gulp, then another, and then... You almost choke. You cough and splutter as something catches in your throat. Thinking a bone must be left in the soup, you're finally able to dislodge it and cough it into your hand. To your surprise, however, you discover it isn't a bone, but a key ring. Not only that, but it has the numbers six and nine on it. You put the key ring in your pocket, but decide against drinking any more of the soup. You'd hate to finally have a week where you don't even escape before you die. So, we've got a little curious... It was like a giblet goblet, wasn't it? Laura, giblet goblet. Giblet goblet. Um, <laughs> if the human was living in that sort of Wales, Paula, we would call her Jonah. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki, Nikki, the human doesn't live there either. <laughs> or writhing. <laughs> The human definitely does not live in writhing. Don't, don't you worry about it. <laughs> uh, Paul, you're going to use it as a marinade. Nice. So, um, right, time for the corpse that is totally, totally not Carl. Right. Um, so, <laughs> call me Ishmael indeed. Do you know what? I'm going to let the human take a sip. Whoa. Stretch. Take a sip. Uh, Josh, the human does not live in Benidorm either. (laughs) Thank you for my sip music. Uh, Unfortunately, I'm too stretched to dance. uh, And it's totally, 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 totally not Carl. Yes. So, thank you for my sip and stretch music, Yvonne. You decide to take a closer look at the hard-working, loyal corpse. Poor Carl, poor dead Carl, poor tasty dead Carl. Your tummy rumbles as you dig in. You would have liked a little more kitchen equipment this week to make something truly gourmet. But then you've also heard that a diet filled with raw, raw food is good too. As you plunder dead Carl's tasty morsels, you check his pockets for anything useful too. 
you find his name badge in his pocket. Apparently he's happy to help, and even in death he's being very, very helpful. You also notice his name badge has several stars on it. Six, in fact. You wonder if it's significant or just part of a shitty incentive scheme his job had. Either way, you pop it in your pocket and gorge until you can barely move. Um... Yes, we're on the paleo Carl diet, Emma. <laughs> um, <laughs> the human lives in Colgate. <laughs> she is minty fresh. <laughs> A van down by the river, honestly. Anyway, um, for for those of you who don't know, there is just. <laughs> Just so that, just so that I do defend Nikki just a little bit. Nikki is actually naming very small seaside towns along the south coast, so she hasn't <laughs> she hasn't gone completely insane. The problem is that the most of the rest of you probably don't know it. <laughs> so there we go. Um, right. Oh, Paula has Blendtec Blender, do you? Uh, anyway, uh, what does that leave? What, what do we have to do now? No, and sorry, Anachronist, you, you lose points for spelling it correctly and for me knowing exactly where you mean. <laughs> you, <laughs> you need to take a more liberal approach, <laughs> like Nikki does. <laughs> Um, yes, other, other seaside towns are available at all throughout the coast of these beautiful British Isles. Um, but it was just in case anybody <laughs> was keeping track of Nikki. <laughs> uh, and she is actually, <laughs> she's actually trying very hard. I know you're batshit crazy, Nikki. That's why we love you. That's why we love you. Oh, Paula, some festive bunting. The Isle of Wight said, Fred, that's better, Anachronista, that's better. Um, best fish and chips in Swanage, Mutu, there's a, wow. Uh, the, the, the human does not live in Port Gaul, no. Joshua, oh, I sounded very posh when I said that. Uh, Chloe, if you want more um, human soup, please do. Um... <laughs> Uh, I've forgotten where we've got to. I, I, don't we have everything we need by now? Don't we? Do we? I. We don't have anywhere left to look, do we? We got... What did we get? Oh, I know. I know what we need to do. Do I? One one second, one second. We're just we're just gonna have a look. One one moment. I, I don't know, human. Have we, have we done that bit? Do you think that's the bit we need to do? It. Really? Okay. Right. Okay. We figured out what you need to do. We we are missing a number. Um. <laughs> I mean, and it does seem. <laughs> I know, Muta, we didn't find the other nine. I know it seems kind of pointless. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there is something that we we didn't try. There's something that we didn't try doing with our lighter. Having gone on about how the fire safety looks a bit dodge, there's something... <laughs> oh, fucking hell, Nikki, you just... <laughs> Just when I thought I understand you, you get even more weird. <laughs> re re really, Nikki? Okay. Um, uh, no, we don't need to set Paula on fire. But yes, Chloe. Yes, that's it, Chloe. We we can try off the thingy what's it? The sprinklers. Yes. We, yes, move to the sprinklers. Um, does it blend? What, what, Paula? Does 
it blend? Oh, does it blend? No, 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 it doesn't blend. Uh, yes, we need to set off the sprinklers, the thingy what's it? Yes, exactly, Froggis. You take the lighter and stretch up towards the nearest sprinkler sensor you can find. You flick the lighter into life and wait. But nothing happens. You wave the lighter around like you're at an 80s rock gig and they're playing the power ballad. Still, nothing happens. You're about to give up when a snake appears out of nowhere, flying through the air and straight through the tiny lighter flame. The flame seems barely big enough to do any damage, yet the snake falls to the floor in flaming agony. With annoyance, you notice that even this has failed to set off the sprinkler system. There's little you can do for the snake other than wait for the flames to die down, and when they do, you notice something among the remains. You find a small coin with the number nine scratched into it. You put the coin in your pocket, but you're, too, but you're not too upset about the snake. It looks like a bit of a dip to you. You also give up on the sprinkler system. Your hope of a quick exit is that quick. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, human, you were optimistic when you wrote this. Your hope of a quick exit is dashed, and you decide to make a point of reporting this place to authorities should you happen to survive. Although, since this place does seem to be something of a death trap, that seems rather unlikely. You put the lighter back in your pocket. You'll have to find another way out. So, there we go. Um, so, yes, we found, we found noodles. The human's tummy does keep rumbling, doesn't it? Oh, Chloe, it's hard, it's hard being the one with the communal brain cell. Well, that's more than the human gets. She seems to miss the day when she's supposed to have it. Anyway, uh, it was your hot personality, was it, Paula? I know, Frog is quick, quick, right? Uh, oh, Chloe, yes. <laughs> human, human has updated Patreon. The human put it on a timer. So, yes, you patrons, if you've been following, you you will, when this is over, obviously, when this is over, You'll be able to go and find out who the killer was. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, see, Mutu, that's the biggest secret. The escape from itself is very, very short and shockingly simple. Uh, but humans being humans, you, you like to make it complex and complicated. Um, so we will put the code in the locks. I think Chloe's buggered off to watch the, watch the <laughs> Patreon video to see who did it. I'm my own worst enemy, aren't I? Hmm? Right. Um, Chloe, it would be 10, maybe 15. I know, Chloe. I know. It would be. It would be done very quickly. And I'm sure if anybody else gave the tiniest little bit of a shit. <laughs> but I, I just think they don't. <laughs> uh, indeed, Paula, it is the flavour. Complex and complicated now with pay books. Oh, we sound like we sound like a very nice, uh, a very old vintage whiskey or or wine or something, don't we? Uh, <laughs> oh, and how nice! Both Paula and Laura wanted to correct me there. Uh, no, we didn't say paper clips. Right. Anyway, uh, oh, I just don't. It's ba 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 ba. It's not that I don't enjoy the escape rooms. It's just that I feel like no one really wants to escape is what I mean. I meant if anybody else actually gave a shit about escaping, you would probably get it done quick. Yeah. Uh, and I love you all very much for it, Ace. Yes. Uh, I know, Chloe, you're in the minority. <laughs> and I'm sure you've noticed, Chloe, that when we started doing these, the puzzle used to be a lot, lot trickier. But... <laughs> But then we realise that basically everybody just wants uh, a few gross things, a few things to poke and destroy. <laughs> oh, Anachronist, and no one's, no one's going to let you. Oh, no. Um, Paula, why escape when you have food and broken arcade games? I, true, true. I, I try to make you all comfortable in your doom. Anyway... <laughs> I, um, yes, I know we used to have to code to figure out as well. 
and you have reading material as well. Or see, see, I, I do love you all. I give you all things that you love, don't I? Yes. Uh, well, oddly enough, Harry, you have uh, joined at exactly the, the right time. We're going to use the code. Yeah. Uh, hello, nosy neighbour. What have you missed? Everything. Uh, we're about to escape. Certain that you now have enough info to open the padlock, you enter the code and open the door. You step outside into the beautiful fresh air of a summer morning. You shake your head to yourself. There were so many ways to die this week, you felt sure you weren't going to make it this far. You suppose you'd better think about getting home. You take one step outside of the bowling alley and hear a noise behind you. You turn instinctively, certain you had been on your own the whole time. You can't see what the noise might have been. And you're more than a little curious. So do you go back into the bowling alley and find the source of the noise for the sake of your own curiosity? Or do you close the door and walk away, certain that you've already spent more time in that place than you want to? Choose. So do you check the noise or do you run? So do you check or leave, everybody? Check or leave, that is your final choice. Yes. Uh, so yes, just, just to be clear, I'm going to let the human take a sip. You can check or you can leave. Uh, and yes, this will be available on YouTube uh, and on my website tomorrow. Uh, for those of you who want to relive the moment that the human finally realised uh, what, um, <laughs> what Nikki was talking about. Take a sip, human. Don't start again, please. There we go. Uh, so, Paula's going to slither back. Yvonne's running away. As is Mutu and Sock Monkey. <laughs> Laura's going to leave, but she's going to push Froggis behind her. Um, Froggis is going to leave. Oh, everyone's going to leave. <laughs> no babies to shame. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this has to be a record, everybody. Oh, <laughs> I was just about to say, I was just about to say, I don't think everybody has ever picked uh, the same ending. Uh, and then Ace comes in with, back in. <laughs> oh, yeah, although technically Paula said she was going to go back in as well, didn't she? Uh, Chloe is and Emma is, yeah. Suck monkey, you're gone with the wind, right? Well, this is what happens for everyone that leaves. Yeah. You decide to leave. It's pretty quiet, but you suppose it must be early in the day. You walk to a nearby bus shelter and take the copy of Luxury Shed Weekly from your full pockets. You flick through while you wait. In fact, it's pretty peaceful. Sun, light breeze, calm... All is right with the world. You're so content that you almost don't notice when it starts. You feel the wave of heat engulf you long before you hear any noise. And when you do hear the noise, you think it deafens you. Though your attention is taken up with the way your flesh seems to be melting from its bones. As quickly as the flames enveloped you, they seem to ebb away. The force of the explosion blows you through the bus shelter, embedding shards of glass into the parts of you that aren't melting. But the shock and the pain and the inevitability of a long and agonising death aren't the worst parts. The worst part is watching, with your one remaining unliquefied eyeball, as your copy of Luxury Shed Weekly is destroyed page by flaming page, dancing on the breeze like burning confetti. Maybe you should have checked what that noise was after all. And you're dead. So, yes, Yvonne, it, it go boom. It go boom. What about the sprinkler system? Well, we tried to set it off, didn't we? And it didn't work. I know, crappy contractors. Uh, frog is misaligned paving slab. Come, come, come now. It's as accurate as a paving slab can be. Uh, I know, Laura, I thought that... <laughs> I thought that would 
get you where it really hurts, the reading material. Are we dead, Carl? Uh, I, th I like to think we are, Anachronista. I like to think we are. We'd make lovely warm human soup, wouldn't we? Yeah. See, this is where we get all philosophical, isn't it? We're always dead, Carl, and we can never leave. Right, so for those of you freaks who decided you were actually going to go back in to investigate what the weird noise was, it's your turn. You decide to check what the noise was and turn your back on the peaceful sunny morning of freedom to walk back into the bowling alley. You take a few steps back inside and the door slams shut behind you. You suppose the breeze must have blown it shut. You turn your attention back to the bowling alley. Nothing seems out of place since you left. Not that there was a lot in the first place. You walk towards the staff room, wondering if dead Carl has had some sort of resurrection or a regeneration at the very least. It has to happen sometime to be ready for next week, so maybe you'll get a second helping this week. But as you're about to push open the door, you hear a noise behind you. You turn quickly, unsure if you saw something scurry across the floor or if your mind is playing tricks on you. You step away from the staff room door, cautiously heading in the direction you saw movement. But again you hear movement from behind you and this time you turn, just in time to see a flash of bright green plushie leaping straight for your head. You grab at the plushie trying to rip it up. You grab at the plushie, trying to rip it off your face as you feel the searing pain of your skin being carved up by something sharp. You're finally able to throw the plushie to the floor as you dab at the blood pouring from the wounds on your face. At least two of your earlier questions have been answered. One, the plushie did have another weapon. And two, the little fucker most definitely holds a grudge. You stumble across the room, unable to see as the blood streams across your face, knowing that the cursed plushie has the advantage. You reach into your pocket, rummaging through the odd collection of pilfered objects from this week's escape. You find what you're looking for and stand ready. The plushie may finish you, but you won't be going alone. You hear the now familiar scurry from behind you and turn in time to see the flash of green. You don't dodge or resist. You simply hold up the lighter and set the cursed plushie ablaze. Being made of cheap synthetic fibre, it burns quickly and the fire spreads equally as fast. As you and the plushie lay dying amid the flames, you think you finally see respect and acceptance in its eyes. It finally found a worthy adversary. And you're dead. So there we go. <laughs> uh, so there we are. Uh, death and death. I hope we enjoyed death and death. Plenty of death to go round. Uh, and quite brutal death this time. If a little bit surreal, perhaps. Yeah. Highly flammable. Well, it's it's not so much made in America, just that it's um, you know, cheap. Sing young ones as I slip into the underworld. <laughs> Anachronista. Um, Yvonne, does the plushie have a name? It's Zelo. Um, you may not be familiar with this, Yvonne. It may be from. Uh, before you joined us. Uh, but the human tried to make a Zula plushie uh, and the human was not <laughs> overly familiar with this sort of fabric and the fabric sort of stretched a bit, but only one way. Uh, and so, uh, as a sewer yourself, Yvonne, I'm sure <laughs> you appreciate <laughs> that it just sort of <laughs> turned into a distorted Zula. <laughs> uh, and Zilo has been called Zula from Wish. Um, and unfortunately, Zulu, Zilo is just out of reach to be able to grab and show you. Um, yeah. Um, oh, Paula, your death got interrupted. Oh, dear. Um, 
how how annoying. <laughs> uh, Chloe, you liked it? Wonderful. Oh, 10k. Lovely. Thank you very much. Yes, Anachronista, that is Zelo. It is Zula from Wish. Uh, oh, blimey, you're bossy today, aren't you, Chloe? Um, it is the Zula we never wanted. Uh, Anachronista, yes, it's, it's a similar thing. It's... <laughs> The, hu <laughs> the human just wasn't ready for it to sort of crawl like that. Uh, see, now, the human would grab Zelo, but um, we're, we're in a slightly different seating position. Uh, and so for the human to... Oh, human. Uh, yeah, human, you know what? It means you've got to move. Uh I'm just thinking, how can we move the camera so that we can move, so that you don't see anything that gives anything away? Uh, and we, we can't do that. But the human can just shift her ass, can't she? Yeah. Why is the human never made a human? That's a very personal question, Laura. <laughs> She's never met the right person. <laughs> um... <laughs> You wait there, we'll go and get Zelo. How about that? You, you get a little treat. Wait there. That wasn't the floorboards, that was the human. Now, excuse me while I prepare my seating. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. <laughs> Did we do that without spoilers? <laughs> so, meet Zelo. <laughs> uh, hello, Max. The the human did not. <laughs> the human did not sing. Um, the human has not been singing again. Don't worry. Um, but yes, this is. <laughs> You, you see how the, the pattern stretched that way <laughs> and not that way. <laughs> so, yes, that's Zelo, Yvonne. Uh, I, I think this is probably uh, one of those moments when it's like, don't ask the question if you might not know, might not want the answer. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Zelo does need to contact uh, Zula's antenna surgeon. Um, Anachronist, do you need one? Emma, you want one? <laughs> it will, it will murder you while you sleep. There, oh, yes, very flaccid. Um, and also. Do you, do you know what else? Do you know, do you know the other little touch? Look, look, these, look at that cute little bottom. Cute little bottom. Uh, anyway, it's lovely and soft, but it will kill you. Uh, I mean, it's like life, isn't it? Hmm? Isn't it? <laughs> Emma, you'll take your chances. Max is cute like a puppy. Well, some people do... <laughs> Do like the weird ones. I mean, it does. It's seen things, hasn't it? It's seen things. Um, Chloe, a, a duo of me and Zelo. Wow. Do you know, Zelo, I had sort of forgotten how truly terrifying you are. You just look slightly melted, like even the years are just, are just drooped. <laughs> Um, I should mention uh, that the heart, heart bottom is is a Zula thing. Zula has a birthmark on there. Bottom apparently, apparently, uh, Frog has seen things and it's done things. Yes, L Laura. Yes, it's done things. Um, I, I mean, I don't ask, but I sort of feel I'll have an ally. Um, teddy bears with it. Oh, do you know what I saw a thing on TikTok? about daddy bears, where they're plushies that arrive, uh, it's in Australia apparently, and some parents are up in arms about it, of course they are, 
Uh, but it's a, a cuddly toy that arrives in a body bag. Uh, <laughs> and you know, like um, some uh, t toys arrive with the birth certificate, this one arrives with an autopsy report. <laughs> I'm like, how, how could you not love that? How could you not love that? Um, so yeah, apparently that's a thing. Uh, Sock Monkey, you'd like a sticker of a Zelo bum with a heart. Okay, so just for a sticker... I know, Laura, right? You're, you're, you're dying for a daddy bear. Um, Fugglers. Oh, that rings a bell, Anachronista. Uh, Josh, you think there should be a plush of the human? Well, it would... It, there would be a similarity, I think. <laughs> um... What was I going to say? Oh, yes, stickers. So what did we decide on with the stickers? We wanted a baby shame. <laughs> we wanted a baby shame uh, and uh, a Zelo bum. Is that what we'd like? Uh, <laughs> Zelo got inspired by the <laughs> extinction. It happens, you know, things go extinct all the time, right? Right. Uh, anyway, everybody, I think this is probably bringing us to an end. I mean, I know we've been brought to an end twice in the escape room, but I mean the live is coming to an end. Uh, so, yeah, so let's let's say night-night to Zelo. Nice night, little cursed plushie. Farewell. <laughs> Sweet fucking dreams, bitch. Um... <laughs> Uh, oh, Yvonne, Yvonne, you s oh, Jesus Christ, human. Uh, you say that, but the human brought the Finger of Doom sticker back for today. Uh, Paul, you want a Gordon Ramsay? Right, so that's three stickers. Gordon Ramsay, uh, Baby Shame, uh, and a Zelo Bum. Okay. The human, you better not forget this. Uh, right. Oh, you want to see who the killer is? <laughs> uh, yes, patrons, if you have been following the murder, you will know that uh, an arrest was made and it was not the killer. Um, so there's another <laughs> another video, another arrest made. So I'll let you go and watch that. Um, so, oh, it's okay, Laura. It's a, it's a curse thing. It's fine. Um, so, oh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the for the update. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to get its revenge now. So, thank you, Chloe. Do you know, Chloe? The funny thing is that uh, the humans uh, Fitbit hasn't always been giving her notifications. It's been driving her crazy, uh, but that she got. So, thank you. Um, so, yes, I, oh, I'm almost confused that I don't have anything to do except go. It's bamboozling, isn't it? So, everybody, don't forget, next weekend we have a usual weekend. Zulu will be here uh, on Saturday. I will be here on Sunday. Uh, and then you'll have your special uh, mod-only chat hosted by The Human on the following Monday. Uh, you will also have next weekend free post on the T-shirts because... Uh, it will be your last, September will be your last opportunity to get our current designs. Who's, who's Zula? Oh, Paula, you, you have no idea what little heart you'd break. What did Paula say? No, nothing, Zula, nothing. Go away now, go away. Um, <laughs> a knockoff scene, though. <laughs> oh, Josh, I can't stay on another hour. Um, so, yes, you have all of that to look forward to next week. Um, so thank you all very much for joining me. It is a pleasure, as always. Uh, thank you for all my likes. Thank you for all my gifts. Um, and thank you to everybody for being subs. I know I always try and flog extra stuff, but really, I do appreciate it, everybody. Um, so, yeah, if you want to check out more stuff, you know I've got links in my profile. You can catch up on the latest vids, yeah? Um, but most importantly, have uh, a wonderful week. 
uh, anachronistic, can you DM? Yeah, sure. I can't promise that the human is very good at getting back to people, but <laughs> but but give it a go. <laughs> we take our chances, you know. Um, but yes, thank you everybody for joining us. Absolute pleasure as always. And I can't wait to see you again soon. So everybody go and enjoy the rest of Sunday, wherever you are. Uh, and have the most amazing week until I see you again. Uh, so I'm afraid it is time for the finger of doom, everybody. Um, thank you for joining me. Go, be free in the world. Uh, live your best lives. I know you are. Um, and yes, you can go and check who the murder is now. Uh, oh yeah, it's the bank holiday here tomorrow, so I hope everybody has an extra day off in the UK. Enjoy, uh, and hopefully the weather will be nice. It's very important for a bank holiday. Anyway, I'm ruffling now. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Farewell!